is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. It's life in football. We are life in football. You are now listening to the Life in Football podcast. Check out the new website, lifeinfootball.com. Once again, the website is lifeinfootball.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Life in Football podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike Fee. And this is your co-host, Colin Moore. You know we love in life and enjoying football. Top notch quarterback, top notch bowler, number one player, big shot caller. We got Peyton Ramsey on, baby. And he a top notch quarterback in this 2021 NFL draft that's coming up. And I love from what I saw on film. He did his thing at Indiana in Northwestern, the Big Ten gunslinger. That's what I call him. Number 12. He was wearing number 12 at each um, team he was on. And his daddy was his high school head coach. Not only that, Peyton Ramsey was an awesome athlete in high school. He played basketball as well. And he played at the good, well, I'm going to say the great state of Ohio. And he played in Cincinnati, at Cincinnati in high school football at Elder High School. This was an amazing athlete. He was awesome. And Peyton is coming off of an MVP appearance and win over Auburn University and the Citrus Bowl, baby, for the Northwestern football team. And let me tell y'all something. He got something that any team, what I would say, need. You need a dog out there, especially a quarterback. You need an athlete. You need a Drew Brees slash Tom Brady slash... Let me see who, who else he kind of remind me of when I was looking at him. Andrew Luck. Now, this is the stuff I'm seeing on film. Now, I ain't really overhyping him. I just saw little spurts of things at times when I'm seeing him play. And I love what his daddy and his mama did. They came out the gate getting these guys ready. Their name is older brother Montana. His younger brother Drew. After Drew Bledsoe and the older brother after um Joe Montana. Now I'm assuming he named out the paid man. I might be wrong, but we finna find out. Without further ado, C Mo, bring him on. How you doing, Rams? I'm doing well. That was quite the introduction there. I appreciate it. Hey man, Mike and Mike amazing with it every time. It's it's a, it's always a hundred percent every that's, time. That's right. That was awesome. Now I do want to know about your name since he done brought that up. Yeah is, it, yeah, is it paid for Peyton Manning? Yeah, I was named after Peyton Manning. Uh, he was actually still uh, still playing at Tennessee. He was still in college when I was born. Uh, Mom liked the name. Uh, my dad was all for it, as you can imagine, as a high school football coach. And uh, yeah, and the rest is history. So I am named after Peyton Manning. Now, see, this making me follow. I'm chasing this rabbit hole because it sounds good to me now. So. If ever, your dad a coach, your mom like Peyton because she saw him balling, your dad down for it anyways because he probably already knew my son finna be a QB. Did you go to any other Peyton Man accounts? Uh, you know, I never I never did. Um, this year, I actually, I, before, you know, COVID, the whole COVID shutdown, I had the opportunity. I was invited to the, the Manning Passing Academy uh, for the first time, um, but then it got canceled, so I didn't have the opportunity to go down there. But uh, it was definitely something that, that I was looking forward to um, before the Big Ten championship game. Actually, Peyton Manning did reach out and he and he called me and I had the opportunity to talk to him. But um, but I've never had the uh, the opportunity to actually meet him in person. Growing up in a football household, and to further along the conversation that we are currently having, let's hear about how I was growing up in a household with seems like to me football fans. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a football family. You know, my dad, a coach my entire life and just kind of grew up around the game and, and really enjoying and loving every aspect of, of what football has to offer. And um, 
you know, if, if it was the weekend, the Saturday in the fall, we had football on in our, in our house and everybody was in front of the TV and kind of just enjoying it. And I think it's something that, uh, that really brought our family and something that, that I don't think any of us really take for granted at all. Now, with that being said, and you, you know, y'all think your family football fans and how was it? Well, let me first off give a shout out to your mom. I think it's Cherie Ramsey. Yep, Sherry Ramsey. Yep. Sherry, okay. Sherry Ramsey. And then to to the big dog, Doug Ramsey, out the head coach, he, he was doing his thing. So how was that playing for your dad in high school and you the quarterback, man? So how was that? Yeah, it was tough at times playing for playing for your dad, especially, you know, my dad was quarterback coach and offensive coordinator. So, um, so yeah, he expected a lot out of me and um, knew what I was capable of doing. So he kind of held me to, to a much higher standard than he held other guys. And at times that was hard, but, you know, looking back on it, you know, five, five and a half years removed from playing for my dad, um, you know, it was one of the greatest experiences that I've had and um, just have so many fun and awesome memories uh, doing so. So even though it was, it was tough in the moment, it was something that, uh, that was awesome and, and that I don't take for granted. Now, as we can see, you're a leader, man. It's it's a fact that you're a leader because you was able to command the offense at Indiana and Northwestern and do it at a high level on both of them. So how does that correlate into you going into the NFL with NFL scouts knowing that, hey, man, this guy can go into any room, any team, and turn it on for anybody? How does that make you feel, man? Yeah, you know, I think the leadership aspect of, of playing quarterback is – is almost more important than the tangible things um, and being able to make all the throws and the big, big arm and be able to scramble. I think leadership kind of trumps all of those things um, because it's about how you deal with people and you have to deal with people in a locker room and in a huddle and, and prove to people that, that you're willing and determined to learn a new playbook in a, in a short amount of time. And um, it, it's a lot, there's a lot that falls on the quarterback's shoulders and um you know, you got to have that, that kind of mental toughness in order to be a leader, and all the great ones have it. Um, you know, you look at Tom Brady, who just won his seventh Super Bowl, um, one of the best leaders, one of the most mentally tough quarterbacks that you're going to come across, and uh, there's a reason that he's continued to win, and um, that's why I like to, to watch guys like that to kind of, you know, take little things from their game and um, and continue just to get better. Now, see, I like that because, see, if I'm looking for a quarterback, I already like the fact that you're studying other quarterbacks, taking what you could take from them and add to your game. So go a little bit more into that. And I want to know how your study habits are, about how you study film and how you get prepared for a game. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, I'm a big Tom Brady guy, but um, Russell Wilson's always been a guy that I've kind of really enjoyed to watch. Um because what we've talked about, the, the preparation piece and the way he prepares for games, um, he always has answers, um, you know, whether it's a, in a drop back situation and he checks to a run or the box is loaded and, and he's checking to a play action pass down the field and he has the opportunity to scramble and make plays and do all these different kinds of things with his legs. And um, you listen to him talk um, and, he, and he credits it all to his preparation and the way that he gets ready throughout the course of the week. He doesn't just show up on Sunday and, um, and make those plays. He makes those plays because it's something that he's gotten really good at, at studying throughout the course of the week and understanding different tendencies. And um, you've seen that's why he's had so much success over the years. So that's just one example of, of a guy that I've continued to watch and, um, you know, continue to take from his game and try to add that into mine a little bit. Hey, with all the success that you have had on the football field, I want to step off of that for a second and talk about what are your plans that you have, you know, once you're done, because we claiming it right now that you're going to be in the NFL and you're going to have a successful career. What is the path you're looking to take after the, um, your football career? Yeah, so my major uh, at Indiana, I graduated – um, with a degree in secondary education. Um, and I did a, a, an entire semester of student teaching uh, at the high school level. So when I'm done playing, uh, I plan to get into to teaching and then uh, coach a little bit uh, on the side and, uh, you know, just continue to 
um, to make a difference in young kids' lives and, and something that I really enjoyed while I was in while I was in Bloomington and had that experience. So I think that's a route that I'll definitely take whenever my playing days are over. With you going and playing at Indiana, then moving on to Northwestern, I want a, a little bit of insight, you know, how you end up choosing Indiana and then going ahead and moving on to Northwestern, which, honestly, you did from what I saw. You were balling at both schools, man. I'm talking about Indiana. You did great. And then at Northwestern, man, y'all was, y'all did a very good job this past football season, Northwestern. So kind of give us some insight on that. Yeah, so coming out of high school, um, I always wanted to play in the Big Ten. And uh, I didn't have – a ton of Big Ten opportunities. It was between Indiana and Illinois. And uh, at the time, uh, Kevin Wilson was like, was the head coach, and he offered me a scholarship and went and I visited. And, and uh, I was really a big fan of what they were building there at the time and just continued to get better my entire time there. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed my four years there. Um, had an awesome experience and met a lot of really, really cool people along the way. And then when I was coming out uh, and I decided that I was going to transfer – um, you know, I thought the idea of playing in the Big Ten uh, for my fifth year was was something that sounded attractive to me, and Northwestern was was another opportunity to do so. And, and Coach Fitzgerald um, is always the guy that I've been really high on, and what he's built at Northwestern. Um, you know, he's been there for you know now 16 years, and um, you know, just an awesome place to be. And it was something that I took my one visit, and I felt like it was a good fit for me, and. Uh, and kind of committed to it and really excited that I did so. Now, I got two more questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. Do your brothers play football? And if so, what what schools are, are – where are they playing right now? Yeah, my older brother, he uh, he played football in high school, but he, uh, he didn't move on to college. Uh, but my younger brother, he plays receiver – uh, he's he's a junior in high school, and he's got uh, he's got an offer from Toledo, and he's got an offer from Miami of Ohio. Um, you know, still hoping to get a couple more. He's got a big senior season ahead, so uh, we're definitely looking forward to that for him. And then, with you being so close to Neptar Stadium down there at the, with the Bearcats, how you then end up playing at Cincinnati? Or you just wanted to go to the Big Ten and play some big time ball? No, you know, I, I always did. Uh, growing up, Cincinnati was my team. Uh, Tony Pike, I don't know if that, that name rings a bell, but he was a quarterback uh, growing up when I was – or when I was growing up, and uh, he's a good family friend of ours. So I was at a bunch of bunch of games down there at Nippert and uh, really enjoyed the, the Bearcats. But like I said, I, you know, I always wanted to play in the Big Ten and um, something that I dreamed about. And, and in Indiana was that opportunity for me, so I kind of jumped on that and, have always kind of kept a close eye on the Bearcats for sure. Well, man, this, I'm going to go ahead and open up the flow to you to talk to the scouts and anybody who may have an interest in a quarterback and let them know the qualities and the other things that you will be very helpful with for us being an um, asset to the team. Yeah, I think we already hit on the first piece, and that's the leadership aspect and uh, just being able to control a team and a locker room and a huddle and build relationships with guys, guys on a team. I think that's number one, but I think, you know, more specifically to a football part of things, just the decision-making and, um, you know, kind of getting the ball out of my hands and completing passes is, is something that I've done, you know, really well throughout the course of my career and then extended plays um, kind of have that athletic ability to, um, to, you know, be effective in, in the ever evolving NFL. Um, you know, you have to be able to make plays with your legs and, that's something that I've been able to prove that I can do throughout the throughout the course of my career. So all those things together, I think, have, have kind of made me the player that I've been and allowed me to have the success that I've had. Y'all just heard a top-notch quarterback talking. Now, y'all will see all the other names on ESPN and on uh, Fox, but I'm telling you, Peyton Ramsey is a name that you need to know. I love everything I've seen on film, and I ain't just talking. See, I played linebacker in college, so I know when you got a quarterback who's tough, who's got a great arm, and he knows the game. He did great at Indiana. He did even better at Northwestern. And now this is a quarterback I would be looking to take at 
actually make sure I got him on my roster because he's going to be a great asset to the team. He didn't play big time college football. He was a son of a head coach in high school. I'm telling y'all right now, man, Peyton Ramsey is the guy that you need on your team, hands down. I want to give a big shout out to his parents for doing such a great job, for raising such a great young man. From what I can tell on the phone, he's very intelligent, respectful. And I want to give another shout out to OTG Sports Management and Miss Taylor because they're doing a great job as well. And I'm going to leave y'all how I always leave y'all. Keep your head up. And not down, I guess you'll fall to the ground. This is the Life and Football Podcast. Catch you next time. You are now listening to the Life and Football Podcast. Check out the new website, lifeandfootball.com. Once again, the website is lifeandfootball.com. Thanks for listening. Try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. It's life in football.